Good afternoon everyone, it's such a pleasure to be here and I'd like to thank the New South Wales Farm Riders for hosting the event and for inviting me. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Hopefully when you walked into the hotel this morning you saw the beautiful vases of flowers that were in the foyer and I was hoping there'd be some here but there isn't. Um, and it's likely that those flowers have been imported into Australia, potentially from Africa, under conditions and quality management situations imposed by Australia. And 90% of the cut flowers sold in Australia are imported uh, by, into Australia by countries like Kenya um, and Singapore, etc. Kenya currently provides 120 million flowers per year. Um, that's about six, it's more than a dozen roses for every adult female every year and I'm not sure whether they actually receive them or not. In addition, we should have a happy Australian rose industry because, because of the work that um, the formal biosecurity system does and some of what ACR does, uh, we know that we've facilitated better biosecurity control there. Um, and I wanted to use the example of Africa just to remind you that we don't need to just be worried about what's happening with our near international neighbours. So today I'm going to be discussing the international work that ACR funds in our region, including the Africa region, and how this complements and benefits the work in the formal Australian biosecurity system and ultimately Australia. So ACR, as you heard from Dennis, is a global leader in developing and delivering agricultural research partnerships in developing countries. And we extensively use the Australian uh, research system, including the universities, the state and federal agencies and the cooperative research centres. We're a statutory authority that sits under the um, Australian aid program and the DFAT portfolio. And we aim to achieve more productive and sustainable agricultural systems for the benefit of developing countries, but also Australia. So as Dennis pointed out, the doing well by doing good. And the research and capacity building work that we do in biosecurity is an easy win for us in this regard. Now we know really well that in Australia, productive um, agriculture and trade are very clearly linked with a robust biosecurity system. But that's not the case in developing countries. And in fact, poor biosecurity systems in developing countries really hamper economic development and trade um, and restrict market access at a national level. And a community level can really directly impact on the food security and the livelihoods and the levels of poverty. Um, and so the role of biosecurity in economic development is really critically acknowledged by the Australian aid program. Um, by our aid policies, by our trade policies and also in the Australian um, aid programs agriculture, water and fisheries strategy under which a lot of the work that ACR does um, exists. And these policies also recognise the value in sharing Australia's world class expertise in biosecurity and food safety with our partner countries. So I'll give you an example. Um, Dennis mentioned we were in um, Zambia yes, uh, a few weeks ago, yesterday, um, when uh, a National Plant Protection Officer from Tanzania, a chap called Katamani, was telling us about the mango industry in, in there. Um, it's worth 50 million US dollars a year. They're the 17th largest global supplier. And in the past 10 years, they've had huge amount of fruit fly incursions and they've lost 62% of their fruit exports. So he's been a participant in some of our programs and through the integrated pest management and a range of um, management techniques that he's learned from Australian expo um, experts that he's applied in just the two years that he's been working in the program, they've reduced post-harvest losses from about 62% to 3% and they've actually had access to new markets in Oman and Saudi Arabia. So that's just two years of exposure to Australian experts. So I wanted to introduce this program, the Australia Africa Plant Biosecurity Program, to use it to benefit, uh, to illustrate four major benefits um, from investing in international biosecurity activities. As Dennis said, it's funded by ACR and led by the Plant Biosecurity Cooperative Research Centre and also with partners with CABI, the International Science Biosecurity Agency, who are very active in Africa, and the Crawford Fund. 
And when we were designing this program, we consulted widely with African ministers of agriculture and our Australian heads of mission in Africa about what were the needs. And they told us, we want you to find the sweet spot between what Australia is really good at and what African needs are. And biosecurity capacity building was obviously the, the answer there. So the aim is to improve national and regional quarantine and plant protection capacity by building a network of experts or change agents across Eastern and Southern Africa. They consist of the public sector, so the National Plant Protection Officers and their institutions, but also the private sector. Obviously they're really critical when it comes to biosecurity. Um, they're looking to increase crop yields, um, enable intra-regional trade, so the movement of food across borders in times of famine, expanding access to international markets and securing greater food security. And I can talk a bit more about it later. But I'd like to um, highlight four major benefits to Australia and Australian agriculture from our investments in biosecurity. So the first one is our activities generally help us build strong partnerships with the private sector and build a strong understanding of the systems that they're using and the quality of those systems. And this is really critical, as we heard from Helen, for effective um, biosecurity in both imports and exports. So the work of the AAPBP provided us really excellent insights into the Kenyan cut flower industry because the fellows on that program worked at the, they were the National Plant Protection Officers and we got good insights into how they allocate their certification and also the industry were also members of it and we got good insights into the industry association which ensures that we can help them with their quality assurance um, systems and that means we reduce the risk to Australia with the importation of cut flowers. And we also built relationships between those people who are packaging it in Kenya and the people in Australia at the airports in Perth who receive the packages and then can deal with um, it. They, they now have a very good uh, communication between the two. We know that the Department of um, Agriculture and Water Resources really relies on the integrity and effectiveness of the relationship of the National Plant Protection Officers and building a closer relationship with the authorities and the industry. And um, the interim Inspector General of Biosecurity's audit report into cut flowers that was released I think in 2015 actually noted that this relationship with those authorities is, going, is in, very beneficial to Australia. The second point is we need to take a global approach to fully understand the potential of the pest threats. Um, and a key element of managing those threats, pests and disease threats, is to understand the pathways, again as we've heard, and the er possible eradication protocols. And working overseas provides these insights. Um, a good example is ACR has been working in fruit fly research for 30 years um, and there was an incident where our experience in Malaysia has provided a direct benefit to the mango farmers in North Queensland when in 1995 exports to Japan were withdrawn because of um, papaya fruit fly incursions. Because we'd done this work in Malaysia, Queensland Department of Primary Industries was able to generate post-harvest treatment protocols for Australian mangoes in a much shorter time than would have otherwise have happened and that resulted in a restart of exports at least six months sooner than would have happened otherwise. The third benefit I want to highlight is the greater exposure to pests and diseases through international work increases our capacity to identify emergent pests and diseases that could pose further risks and to nip a possible incursion in the butt, no pun intended. And importantly, working overseas provides opportunities for Australian vets and experts to see the diseases and their behaviours firsthand and to learn much more about them in real life rather than relying on textbooks. And it's particularly important from the perspective of preparedness. Um, the Plant Biosecurity CRC have recently noted that their surveys that they did last year in Southeast Asia um, through the Mekong Plant Protection Network have identified 500, I think they were unrecorded pests and suspected viruses. And the fourth and final benefit is that improved regional biosecurity protects Australian biosecurity and Australian agricultural industries. For many years, um, ACR and before that ADAB 
have worked on research projects and to build the capacity in Indonesia to push foot and mouth disease out of Indonesia and, uh, and were successful. And that was really critical for protecting Australia from the risk that it could cross over into our cattle industries. An animal health project in the Philippines examined a bacteria that was causing a respiratory disease in pigs. Um, it was thought that there were 14 strains and they were developing vaccines to accommodate those strains. But the research discovered a 15 strain and that was particularly relevant to uh, the disease in Australia. So we were able to incorporate this strain in our vaccines. Um, Australian pigs are now vaccinated against that disease and it's been highly successful. So in conclusion, through international biosecurity work in building capacity in the region, Australian scientists, vets and policy experts are now far better informed of the risks in developing countries that could impact on Australia. Our international work complements the formal biosecurity system. We can be more confident about importing goods from the region, including roses for Mother's Day. We can remain better abreast of emerging pest threats such as the recently announced fall army worm that is devastating Africa and could threaten Asia, the Mediterranean and potentially Australia. Through the linkages fostered between biosecurity experts and the private sector and the um, author national authorities. And finally, and I haven't talked too much about this, but we can be confident that ACR funded research has contributed to regional prosperity and that is ultimately the aim of the Australian aid program. Thank you.